five and I was asked to write a poem uh, in the exam sheet, I had forgotten what I was supposed to write. So I still nonetheless wrote a poem. And then when the exam paper came through and the teacher was asking, okay, so the poem that you have oh, been yeah. asked to write, I remember the title of the poem still, The Zoo. Well, it doesn't really match with the poem which has been taught in the class. And I said, yeah, it doesn't and shouldn't. He said, may I know why? I said, of course, because I forgot the poem. So what did you write? I said, I wrote the poem out myself because you asked me to write the poem called The Zoo. So I wrote a poem on The Zoo. Whether or not it's a poem or not, that's up to you to decide. But you asked me to write, I wrote. Now give me some marks for it. Well, she gave me 30 percent. I passed. And I passed nonetheless. See, when Einstein said that, Humayun Ahmed also said this, and many others, that if you'd like to solve a big problem, you cannot solve it from being within it. You have to go at the periphery. You have to go at the fringe. Probably you have to go beyond the circle and sphere of influence that this problem casts a shadow on. Today's problem is information. The title of my talk is Digital Equality in an Era of Artificial Intelligence. Can anyone tell me what digital is? Anyone, just anyone. You know, I know that it's a TED talk, but still one can talk, right? It's a talk nonetheless. And there's so much of stories, so many stories all around us, stories in the air, stories in the water, stories in your eyes, stories on the glimmer of your hair. I can sense stories from far away. And probably that gives me a little bit of an advantage when I'm trying to do what I do, which is listen. Information itself is the problem. When you try to define it, you don't know exactly how to define it. Information creates more trouble of its own. This is with information that we dream, we aspire, our dreams, our nightmares, our hopes, our aspirations, our ambitions, our despair. What is it? It's information. It's with information that we play our lives. It's with information that we weave our dreams. It's with information that we see into the future. We see through the blinding darkness of blindness and see something which doesn't yet exist. It's all a bit of information. What is digital? When you contain the entirety of that information onto electronic platforms, that's where digital comes in. This is a slightly elusive concept. Doable. No, just doable. Let's bear it with me for the time being. But why is digital divide? Digital divide is all around us. You know, when you have so much of information, so many pieces, bits, and angles, and avenues, and aspirations, where do you begin? How much is it that we know? How much is it that the next person next to me knows? Is there an asymmetry? Is there some form of a divide? Is there some form of a distance? Is there some form of a dissonance? Someone had said that music is the language of the universe. The universe speaks to you through the language of music. And just before me, we saw the transformative power of music. That's also information. And we saw it on a digital platform. What if there was someone, and there are many, who don't have access to these platforms, and yet, who are our fellow countrymen who belong to the same societies that we belong to, the communities, to the clans, to the families, to the tribes, to the nations that we belong to, belong to the same group, and yet don't have access to the huge privileges that we have as individuals, as groups, as we are in this room? What happens to them? My friends, that is 80% or more of the countries or the communities that we belong to. That is the bottom of the pyramid. That's what we call the underprivileged, the disadvantaged. It's, a, it, it's, it's eloquent to write about it as well, but that's who we are. That's part of us. So what is the nature of the things that we are dealing with? Where do we start? You know, I'll, I just wanted to pick up many stories. I wrote five timelines for this TEDx. 
And then I said, okay, fine. None of it makes sense. Let's make a story of our own when we speak. So I'll tell you the story when what we had done in my own ministry, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. As you might be knowing that I come from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's my day job. And at night, I become Batman. Well, or well, I think so. Well, some of my friends, uh, younger friends might be saying that I do. But, you know, that's what I think. But yes, when we saw thousands and thousands of expatriates lining up in queues for a simple attestation from one of our embassies or some of our embassies for nothing, literally, just a signature. And it's a very manual, routine signature. No, it was unacceptable, completely unacceptable. So what do we do? What we did two years before, I was given the task of ICT as a wing. We had nothing to do other than supplying printers and toners. So we said, hmm, since we don't have anything to do, let's see what more we can do. And we started with information. Fast forward two years, we have 81 embassies, missions abroad, and the headquarters connected in a seamless, unified web platform. We have 29 of our internal services and 34, all of our consular services online on MyGov platform. We have the digital archive, which the government of Bangladesh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, wanted to have for 53 years and never had in five months. And then we have, we can actually track, monitor, and deliver any service that anyone, any Bangladeshi citizen would like to have from anywhere in this planet 24-7. Well, this is what we're supposed to be doing, right? And I wouldn't have told you this. The reason that I tell you is one single reason. Do you know how much it costs to deliver this huge spectrum of events? Any idea? You're all familiar with the projects, right? So we had eight or 10 different big projects. How much it cost? 12 lakh, 60,000 less than 10,000 US dollars. And you know what we did? We did it with the existing digital public infrastructure blocks that the government of Bangladesh has already deployed with open source platforms. What does it say? It says that anything is possible. We started off with just building uh, Lego sets. We started off by building websites, MyGov application platforms, and we have ended up with connecting factor markets to production markets, creating a seamless channel of entrepreneurship and innovation connected to global supply chain mechanisms, and essentially giving the floor, the architecture where one can play. You know, this is precisely the room that I would like to have for myself, connecting all young minds, youthful minds, including that of the former principal secretary as well, although he looks old, but he is young in his mind. So we'd like to connect him and the, all the others that's there to a seamless bracket. What more can we do? And our projects are now going abroad. The Gambia has already taken it, the whole entirety of my Gov application platform. Bangladesh government is giving technology to more than 30 countries in the world. We are not recipients, we're givers. And it's not that we believe that we're donors, no. We work things out together, the whole global south. And whatever technologies we have experimented with for the last 15 years, and particularly for the last two years, is going deep into the front face of global governance. Bangladesh has set the record straight that what Bengal thinks today, the world thinks tomorrow. That's what we have done. We have proven it. And it's all yours. It's ours. And what has happened next is that the global governance inside the global governance, say for the global south, which is bottom of pyramid market, some call, we have 80% of the people living there. They deserve more, we deserve more, and we, we want to do more, and it can be done. No amount of tech, fund, or any other crunch can justify inept, incompetent, inefficient, corrupt governance structure. Nothing can justify that. It's doable. We have done it in the Foreign Office. It's all open. We'd, we'd request you to visit the Minister of Foreign Affairs at any point in time, day or night, preferably during the day. But yes, it's possible, it's doable, we have done it, and we have done it in a way which can be replicated across any ministerial platforms, across any country platforms. The whole ecosystem is at your disposal for the taking. Start owning it. A new social contract is coming up where authority must be equal to responsibility, 
and that must be equal to accountability. These three very basic cornerstones of the accountability mechanism must be in place. And that starts with you, my friends, each of you as an inseparable part of the ministries that we represent or not, or the structures where you sit in or not, or wherever that you might be listening to it from. You know, if there is a mathematical identity, if you divide something by zero, the result is infinity. What if we don't have any divide in the digital ecosphere, and which is possible? We have infinite possibilities, infinite abundance for everyone. It is an infinity game. Let's play it. Savvy? Want to play it? Perfect. Then let's do it. Let's look towards the future with great hopes, with great ambitions, and with great confidence that yes, we have done it, and we'll keep doing it, we'll keep doing more of it, and we will make a new world tech bird. Thank you.